Today, I wear the yellow rose. In 1920, suffrage, suffragists and anti-suffragists met in Nashville, Tennessee to lobby the state legislator for and against ratifying the 19th Amendment. Both sides wore rose-shaped pins to indicate which side of the battle they were on. Suffragists wore yellow roses and anti-suffragists wore red roses. Good afternoon, I'm Tammy Lee Brown Edwards. I greet you from the asterisk side of the 19th Amendment. Today I will tell you two stories, one that's my own and one is that, that is not. Their story. Although black men were, had technically been able to get the vote in the, with the 15th Amendment passage in 1870, they were disenfranchised, especially in the South. So the passage of the 19th Amendment was something that black women reasoned it would be their time and could not be denied. In 1913, in March, women walked to Washington down Pennsylvania Avenue. Women were on horseback, women walked, and many onlookers were on the parade side. Black suffragettes were relegated to the back of those processions. Observers said at that day, according to the Washington Post the article in August, that they pushed their way ahead of the line and even tried to integrate the line. Those activists brought up the rear and, and mingled among the other delegates. Those women belong to the sorority of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, founded in 1913, just some months previously at Howard University. Dr. Essie Rutledge is a member of that fine organization, and six other members of Congress are also sharing that same sorority. Now my story. My ancestors, John and Perley Harris, were born enslaved people. John Harris was a horse jockey, and his owner told him that if he continue to win races, he can purchase his six children and his wife. And he did that. Fast forward to a few decades to John Harris's granddaughter, Rosie Lee McLemore, and her husband, Horace, my great grandparents. In St. Francis County, for the sum of $1, according to the document, Payment of a poll tax was authorized by the Act 220 of 1947. As far as I can tell, for nearly 10 years, my mama Rosie and daddy Mac paid $1 poll tax up until 1960. I brought their 1960 poll tax with me. As you know, the Voters Right Act was passed in 1965. So today I tell you that my mama Rosie was a grandmother and into her 50s, way before she was allowed to vote. And I have proof of that, that the daughter of an enslaved person tried to vote. Mama Rosie is the asterisk to the 100-year commemoration of this 19th Amendment. Thank you.